Okay, so if you are watching this video, you have got to do some talk uh, calculations. But one of those calculations, one of those questions in your side pad is really tricky, actually. So thank you uh, for those who emailed me about this question. So this is question three in your side pad, either page 181 or page 61. Um, and here's what it's about. It's saying someone has their hand, they have a ruler on top of their hand, and they have some masses placed at the ends um, in a way. And so they've got, they've got the ruler placed in a way that this is balanced. And so we know that this system is at equilibrium. Um, we've been told some information. Uh, we've been told that the distance between the masses is 30 centimetres. So um, 0 0.3 metres. And we've been told that each of these masses is a 50 gram mass. And there's one on one side and three on the other. So here we've got the masses. I've just put M1 and M2. So this would be M1, and this would be M2. Uh, and then the question is, all right, well, where, where is this fulcrum? Where is this pivot? What's the distance from um, the pivot to the masses on this side? And what's the distance from the pivot to the masses on that side? You'll notice that I've put kind of like the center of mass of each of these objects, so it's not going to be quite the end of the ruler. So, this is... <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's what we know. We know that if this is at equilibrium, all of the torque anti-clockwise is going to be the same as all of the torque clockwise. Yes? We know that torque is force times distance as well. Okay, so this is all stuff that we know. Force times distance, right? We know the masses of these objects, and so therefore we know their weight force, okay? Um, we also know that the distance between these masses uh, is 0 0.3 meters. So this distance from the pivot this way and this distance from the pivot that way should equal 0 0.3. So if we call this distance 1 for mass 1 and distance 2 for mass 2, we could say, yes, we know all the torque should be equal. Yes, we know torque is force times distance. And we know that this distance here um, is made up of d1, distance 1, plus distance 2. So those are things we know. Okay. How could we figure this out? Well, the torque from this mass at its distance will equal the torque from this mass at its distance. So let's say um, force 1 from mass 1, right? Force 1 times distance 1 should equal force 2, that force at that distance. Hope you're following me so far. We can actually calculate this force here because we know the mass of this object. Um, we can also calculate the mass of that object, so, um, so the force of that object. So we know both of these forces that are acting down. But we don't know distance one or distance two. If we knew one of them, it'd actually be pretty straightforward. Um, but we can use, oh my god, we can use algebra. Um, <laughs> because <laughs> we could actually rearrange the stuff that we know here to better suit us. And um, if you know anything about algebra, you're always trying to kind of like get the numbers, um, sorry, the, the letters to be the same. You know, like if you have fewer letters, that's easier to do, right? So bear with me. Gonna write what we knew before, but instead of if, oh, I'll write it up here. Yeah, F1 times distance 1 should equal F2 times distance 2, because that way the torques from each of these ends will balance. Using the information where you were given, force 1 is um, 50 grams or 0 0.3. 
0.05 kilograms times gravity. This is the way I do it because I like to keep everything kind of accounted for. So force 1 is 0 0.49. Um, distance 1, we don't know, right? Um, but we could, we did know that d1 plus d2 is 0 0.3. We could rearrange that. And instead of saying d1, we could say um, that it's the same d1 is 0 0.3, take away d2, isn't it? We've just taken that over to the other side. So instead of writing d1, we could actually write this. Um, so I'm going to do brackets instead of a times. 0 0.3, take away d2. And that should equal, I'm running out of space, I haven't, I haven't planned this properly, force 2, we can find that out. That would be 0.15 times gravity. It's 1.47. Um, times d2. Now, we've already had d2 here. So if we have d2 on this side of the equal sign, it means that we could actually do something with them. That's the probably hardest part here, is that we now, instead of d1 and d2 on either sides of the arrow, we've just got distance 2 and distance 2. That's probably the hardest part of all of this. So now that we have um, this here, this is just the maths problem now that we need to solve. So to go through this, um, obviously you're going to expand that, so 0.49 times 0.3 uh, equals 0 0.147, so 0 0.147, um, and then again 0.49 times negative d2, uh, 0 0.47. D2, it's going to be 1.47 D2. You could drop the twos here if you wanted to as well. Um, then what do we do in algebra? We try to get all the numbers together and all the letters together. So we're going to move that across, right? So then we're left with 0 0.147 equals 1.47 D2 take away 0 0.49 oh plus sorry plus apologies because we're taking that over so that's going to turn into a plus um again with algebra as you know if you've got something like this you can actually add these numbers together um, and simplify that further so 1.47 plus 0.49 is 1.96 d2 uh, and then again, you might know that you can take this over and it will be a divide, or you would divide both sides by 1.96 and that would cancel to a 1. So 0 0.147 over 1.96 would be D2. Uh, 0 0.147, that comes to D2 being 0 0.075. Now remember, what was D2? It was the distance from the fulcrum to the second mass. So the distance from the fulcrum to the second mass is 7.5 centimetres. Yeah. So that would be 7.5. Now, we were told, well, centimetres, right? We were told that the distance between these two things was 30 centimetres. So now we're just left with some basic maths. D1 is 30 centimetres, take away 7.5 centimetres, or you could keep that in metres, that's fine. Um, and that's going to give you 22.5 centimetres, being the distance from the fulcrum to the second, uh, the, sorry, the first mass. So 22.5 centimetres. There. Um, that's the way I did it. That's the way the side pad kind of does it as well. Uh, when you get to, so that's your answer right? Um, 
22 centimeters from from this mass and 7.5 centimeters from that mass is where the um, pivot is but you could have done this the other way around you could have rearranged that for d2 equals um, 0. Point, oh, sorry d1 to go 0. 0.3 um, and you could have done this the same way you just instead of solving for d2 you would have solved for d1 um, so you can try it if you want and see if you come up with the same number it means you've done it the right way I hope that helps. This would be your full-blown super excellence question because it's relying on you to do a bit of um, quite a bit of substitution in with unknown values.